First off, let me introduce my better half. Uh, this is this is my wife, Anne. We we, uh, we got married. When we, we got married when we were 19 years old. Uh, I was making, I think, 144 bucks a month or something like that in the Navy, and so she clearly married me for money. Uh, <laughs> We got paid another $124 a month for a basic allotment for quarters, and I think the apartment cost $250. So it, it worked out to be. It worked out. It worked out well. We've been blessed. We have two daughters, and we now have six grandsons. We come here to this museum as often as we can. Our six-year-old grandson um, wants to be a paratrooper, and he wants, yep, and a policeman. And so we were. Um, so they have a. If, if you've been here, they have a scavenger hunt you can do here. And they, he loves it. So you can come, you have to go answer all the questions. And he goes through every war. And we were just talking the other day about the, um, with the prisoners of war, what they were inside, the little bamboo uh, thing he was just talking about the other day. Uh, he was just is fascinated uh, with the military. We went to, if, any, if, you, if you're from here, you know, we have the planetarium up in Fort Myers. We were there about a year ago. And they turned the lights off and they started talking about the stars. And they said something about the military in front of everybody, he stands up, I love the military! <laughs> There's no question he's gonna, he's gonna serve. It'll, I don't know if he'll be in the Army, Navy, Air Force, they're all wonderful uh, services. I like all of them. So, the, um, I want to thank you for being here. We, have, we got to work together back when uh, nobody, I had hair. Um, back when it was, like I've, I've tried a lot of difficult things, uh, running for office, but trying to build a company from scratch with, uh, with no money. And uh, Dylan Reed was a great partner, and, and they, they believed in me, and it worked out. So I want to thank Ed for, for that. Thank you. And John um, Dozier, congratulations on being in the uh, Florida Veterans Hall of Fame. Uh, there's not many people that have uh, not been around that long, so congratulations on that. And uh, I was just, I mean, I was just at a, um, we just did a ceremony for veterans the other day, and somebody had been in, um, he'd been in Vietnam and a prisoner for, I think, four or five years, I don't know how long, but I just feel so sorry for people that, that happens to anybody in this world. And unfortunately, we all have to understand that we're still at war. I mean, we're, we still have people at risk, and we're still losing uh, military members. We, I just got back from Kuwait and went, went and uh, thanked. We have a lot of National Guard uh, over in Kuwait right now, and a lot of them. Florida Army Reserve over in uh, Camp Arachon. And by the way, if you think this is hot, during the day it was 115 to 120. It cooled off at night to 100. And, uh, so, but it was uh, it was a wonderful experience to, uh, to thank them. The when I got elected back in, in 2010, one thing I wanted to do was I wanted to make this the best place to be in the military. Whether you're on active duty or if you're a veteran, make this the best place. My father uh, did all the combat jumps in the Second World War. Uh, he told me how great the army was, how great the food was, and the accommodations. <laughs> so um, I joined the navy. <laughs> I got three meals a day. They didn't tell me the room I was going to be in was going to be. Fifth of it's going to be about, you know, about this long, seven feet high, three racks high, 57 people. And they didn't tell me that when I signed up. Uh, but I had a great experience. Uh, I didn't, I was, um, I was in at the tail end of Vietnam. I didn't go to Vietnam. A lot of, at that point, the Navy was doing a lot of shore bombardment, but I was on a ship that uh, did that. But what I do remember is, if you were in the military at that time, it was a very difficult time. Where I was stationed at science, dogs and sailors stay off the grass. They hated the military. It didn't help you when you got off active duty. Uh, it, it hurt you to try to get a job. Uh, people called people all sorts of names. It was a very difficult time uh, to be in the service. And one thing I wanted to do is, it's tough to be at war a long time. It's tough on a society, it's tough on all of us. I just want to make sure in Florida, we respected our, our military. If it wasn't for people willing to put on the uniform, and you look at some of the things that they've had to do, uh, we wouldn't have all these freedoms. It's just an opportunity to get them to come together like this, have, have free and fair elections, uh, decide who gets to lead our state and our country. We wouldn't have any of that because that's not, that doesn't go on anywhere around the world. And if you don't think that that's true, just look at cl countries close here. Look at Cuba, look at Venezuela, now look at what's happening in Nicaragua. We've got to respect the people that are willing to die for our freedoms uh, and make sure. So it's um, so what I started doing as soon as I got in, I started having base commander meetings about every 90 to 120 days and said, what can we do to solve your problems? Spouse is not getting jobs, the kids not getting the right school, uh, encroachment around the bases impacting their mission. So we started solving those. You know, we did it every 920 days we said we're gonna solve those problems within that before the next meeting. We started working with the legislature. And we have a wonderful legislature that's very military uh, supporting. Uh, when I walked in, uh, unemployment rate for veterans was 15% plus. 
it's now down to 2.9 percent. Our companies have hired veterans all across the state. We've increased veteran uh, education opportunities. Uh, we have um, uh, we we made easier for their kids to get into if they're a kid with development disabled to get into the right program as soon as they come to the state. Not start at the bottom of a wait list again. There's just so many things we've been able to do, uh, and now I think the perception is we're the most veteran and military friendly state in the nation. We have six veteran nursing homes, all of them five star. If you want to go feel good, go visit one of them. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, military uh, stuff there, and there's people that will tell you unbelievable stories. One of the nice things about giving away the 15,000 veterans medals is I get to hear stories, and I get to highlight people. And everybody's got their military story, uh, like my dad did. In my case, one of the neatest days of my wife's in my life is one of my older daughter who lives down in Naples with the five boys, uh, the one the six-year-old must have been military. Um, she called her grandfather because she found a picture of his company and with him in it in a museum in St. Mary of Lace because he had parachuted in to Normandy the day before. 17% of his company died right there. So almost nobody he, he believes he went over with him came back alive. It was a very, very tough war, especially for a kid with a sixth grade education on the front lines. And so uh, our family has been blessed uh, with people that have served. And I, we're hopeful that uh, our grandsons will want to serve. We don't have any granddaughters yet, because we can be hopeful for them too. Uh, but uh, but it's, it's been really nice. As you all know, I'm running for the Senate. Uh, I'm going to try to do the exact same thing in D.C. that we've done in Florida. We've got to do everything, whether it's fixing our VA facilities, giving people options of where they get their health care, making sure they have all the benefits. All the things we are doing in Florida, we've got to do that naturally. We've got to take care of everything. If any of you run for office, one of the nice things is when people support you. It's like when you, when you go public and you have a great company that's going to help you go public. You think, that's, this is great. I better do my job. Uh, but we have veterans all across the state that are supporting their race for the Senate. And what I tell people, I will do everything I can to make this country uh, a better country for our veterans. Uh, it's, it's the most important thing I think we can do. Um, I'm working hard uh, to be your, uh, your senator. I worked hard to be your governor. I, by the way, get prepared. I hope we don't have any hurricanes, knock on wood. Uh, we, uh, we, we just, it's, it's just now hitting um, Pensacola. I just talked to uh, uh, the, uh, the utilities up there uh, about what's happening up there. We have a lot of, we have, we're going to get four to six inches of rain in Pensacola right now, which will mean to we'll lose some power up there, but hope they'll get it back on quickly. Uh, so I try to stay up for them. But thanks everybody for being here. This, by the way, take the time to go through this museum. It's a wonderful museum with wonderful people. And I'm sure you'll see us up here uh, with our with our grandson again, uh, because he loved, loves coming here. And we have to buy another 82nd Airborne, 101st Airborne hat every time we come here. So he's, my grandson's got a lot of Airborne hats. He's got every bit of it, it, paratrooper paraphernalia you can imagine. Uh, we were over there, we saw him yesterday, and he was going to a swim party, and he was putting on his military stuff. And his mom told him he couldn't wear military stuff to uh, a swim party. And so he, he was very disappointed. So, so I want to thank everybody. Uh, I want to thank all the veterans for all their support, and I hope everybody continues to support all of our veterans and have a great day. Bye bye. beautiful Air Force hats in the gift shops, or don't, don't leave uh, too quickly. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming, but as the governor said, don't, don't skedaddle out of here too quickly. This museum is just a living tribute to the heroes that came before us, and a lot of those heroes are still in the room today. So if you're, you're a civilian here visiting, go up to the people that are in uniform. We have two World War II veterans right up here in the front as well, and there's a lot to see and do here. And we just couldn't be more happy that the governor and Mrs. Scott took the time to come here and honor our veterans, honor this museum and this library, and we wish them all the best. Sir, thank you for your service, and uh, Godspeed. <laughs>